everybody. This is a video about Scene22x distortion. When we talk about distortion, there's a lot of words that come out here, and there's two of them on the screen right now, distortion and fuzz. A third word that you often hear is saturation, and a fourth one is overdrive. Now, depending on the context, sometimes these mean something specific and sometimes they don't. They just, we're talking about generically a concept. Now, all of these really, we could group into a big category of adding harmonics. What it means to add harmonics to a signal is when you play an audio wave through a module, it has a fundamental frequency. And when you have an oscillator and you tune that oscillator, you're tuning the oscillator to the fundamental frequency. Now part of what adds interest to the sound, known as timbre, is that that fundamental then has other smaller sine waves that are harmonically related to the fundamental. There's some kind of harmonic relationship, and that becomes pleasing to our ears. What all these things, saturation, distortion, overdrive, etc., what they're really doing is they're amplifying the upper harmonics. So the extra harmonics that maybe we weren't hearing before, they're making them a little bit louder. Sometimes they adjust the ratio or the relationship and amplitude between them. And all of that science really boils down to it sounds interesting. On the low end, when distortion is dialed back and it's not too strong, it can make a sound pop, have a little bit more sparkle, sometimes a little bit more high end, and maybe stand out a little bit more. And obviously, as we turn that up, it starts to become more and more of a defining element of the sound until we get to the fuzz end of the spectrum where it's just complete chaos. And depending on what you're doing, that can be really fun and really add some grit and texture to your music. So I've reset us back here to the starting state of the module. And probably one of the first things that you're wondering is what, what is this shape thing that's going on here? We've got a grid and we've got kind of a light gray line here in the middle. That represents zero volts, by the way. And then we've got the stick blue line that as we move these knobs, uh, they change around a little bit. So what we're actually looking at here, if I pull both of these all the way down, you can see we get a completely perfect 45 degree angled line moving through this grid. What this grid is showing us is known in the distortion world as the mapping function. And uh, the way that you can think about this is there's, there's these boxes going along the bottom and the boxes going along the top. Now what's happening is the boxes going along the bottom are the input amplitude of a signal. So if we count over one, two, three, four, five, we end up about here. And then if we follow that up, whatever its corresponding value is on the y-axis is going to be our output. So in other words, What's going along the horizontal axis is our input, and what's going along the vertical axis is our output. Now, as we, I'm gonna bring up the distortion here. You can see it starts to bend. And what this is showing us is that our input, input amplitude is going to get changed. In other words, it's going to get mapped from one value to a new value. And so before, where we had the 45 degree angle, we knew that for five units in, we were gonna get exactly five units out, whereas here, if you look over, we're gonna go over three. So if we give it three units of input in, you can see when we go up, we're only gonna to get to this first one, we're gonna get one unit out. And likewise, as I start to sweep across the shapes here and even add some more, you can see that what this is doing is it's going to start bending the amplitude of the signal. In other words, what was quieter will start to get louder and it will maybe smush our signal a little bit. And then as we sort of sweep over here way on the end, we're gonna get some weird, crazy sort of folded mapping going on. Now, you don't really have to know all of that to use it. I mean, for the most part, you can set it on a patch and move these knobs around and you're gonna get something out the other end. As you probably already guessed from me just moving around knobs, this one here called distortion, this is changing the overall amount of distortion that we're applying to the signal. And you can see in the visual here, the closer this shape is to this 45 degree, the closer to the original sound that we're gonna get and the farther away from it, the more distortion we're going to get. So this is fundamentally acting like a distortion amount. The shape knob is continuously sweepable. There's a bunch of different shapes in here. So on the far left, we have a very soft one. You can see that this looks a bit like the 45, but it's kind of got these curvy things on the end. This one is very soft. When you just want some light distortion, maybe you've got a kick drum or a tom drum, and you just want to add a tiny bit of sparkle on the top, this one's pretty good. 
as we start to sweep over, when we get into this territory, this S curve, we're getting to more of a saturation, a tube type saturation. As we push that farther and we start to get a little bit more to this rounded square shape, we are getting into guitar pedal distortion territory. And then as we push that even more, we start to get into this sine wave and then this folded sine wave. Now, what this does not mean, this does not mean you're going to get a sine wave out. In fact, if you notice, this is actually two phases of a sine wave, two, two cycles here. What you're going to get is your input signal that has been remapped to these values based on input and output. Now, I will tell you, and you probably would guess, as you get more into this folded territory, it really starts getting crazy. All right, so I've gone ahead and added a basic oscillator and filter to this patch. I added the filter just to, to bring out some of those highs so that we're not killing our ears as we uh, just listen to a raw saw waveform. You can see I've got the saw wave patched in. Here's what it sounds like. And here's our completely dry signal. As we bring this up, so what you're hearing there is those upper harmonics are starting to stand out a little bit more, right? The high end, that, that, that higher end part of the signal, that sparkle is starting to come out. I'll do that again. See, it's dull. Now it's starting to stand out a bit more. We can sweep through the shapes. Now, one thing to note here is if we were to change the waveform, so for example, let's say that I was to use a sine wave. You can hear it's getting a little fatter. And when we get into this middle range of the shape, it really starts to add texture. Yeah, which is pretty cool. The square is going to react differently as well. So there you can hear we're getting a little bit more harmonics, but we're not getting as much. And that's because square waves are already sort of squared off. They have a lot of high harmonics already. Where we will really start to see the square wave jump out is in the sinusoid shapes uh, towards the second half. So you can hear that it gets like really crazy and buzzy as we're destroying that. Cool, I'm gonna go back to sine just to give you a baseline. Now another part of this is the fuzz circuit down here. And the way that the fuzz circuit works is it interacts with two things. Number one, it interacts with the frequency of the input. So what the fuzz is gonna do is it's gonna amplify the distortion in that particular band. So if we're sending in a low signal, like right now this is a relatively low signal, this one's even lower. If we're sending in a low signal, high isn't going to do a whole lot for us. In fact, you can hear it's, it's, it's barely doing anything. And that's because with this particular wave, we're not getting a whole ton of high end. We're going to get a lot more with the saw. So there you can hear as we have a much higher signal, the high fuzz is doing a lot more for us. Mid. Now in this case, in this case what's happening is we don't have a lot of low end content. If I go back down to the low, you can hear that that's doing a lot more. So there you can hear that where your frequency content is and where your distortion is will really ultimately dictate how much fuzz you get out. Now, that was all fairly academic and honestly kind of boring, so let's take a listen with some actual sound clips. I have reset the module back to its starting state, which by the way is just right click and reset controls. And I have added this uh, sampler 
Um, what I'm going to do now is let's listen to the dry signal. So one thing I didn't mention before is we've got a knob here called gain and one called mix. This controls the overall output level. So if you're getting too loud or if you want uh, to be louder, you can adjust this with the gain here. I'm going to reset that back. And the other knob I want to mention here is mix. This is a blend between the wet and dry signal. So all the way to the left, this is going to be 100% dry. So let's take a listen to our dry sound. Okay, so pretty basic. I'm going to turn on loop and let's start uh, messing with the controls. Now, a good workflow that I found when using this distortion is, first of all, to dial in the right amount of shape and distortion. The shape will really kind of describe not only how much, but, but how it's affecting the signal, and then distortion will let you blend that amount. Now, once we have those two set, I'm going to adjust the gain because adding distortion will typically increase the amplitude a bit. And once we've got the gain set where we want, then we can go ahead and tweak the fuzz to taste. All right, so I'm gonna turn the mix up. So already, already you can hear it's popping a little bit more. Here it is dry. And here it is wet. Yeah, so we got some grit on it already. Let's find a good amount here. Now you can hear it's getting louder on adding a bit of fuzz. So really, that's the basic idea. Now, there's one other thing we can do, which is all of these fuzz circuits, as well as the shape and distortion, have modulation jacks. We can patch in something here and get some movement going on. So let's go ahead and play with that. That's way too much. I'm going to bring down the attenuator here. That sounds pretty good. down the mix a little bit. I'm going to use a triangle to bring up the fuzz on the low. Maybe slower. Yeah. You can hear that little whoa, whoa every now and then. Notice how much character and movement it's adding to the sound just by kind of tweaking around with these things. One thing that I found in developing this distortion module is that you don't always have to put the distortion on the max value and leave it there for the entire time. In fact, dialing it back and then using modulation to just sort of surprise the listener with a little bit of crunch every now and then is actually a really effective technique.